In this video, I'd like to talk about the math question of the day from March 29th, 2023. And with this problem, we have an integral of the tangent of x plus the secant squared of x. So to evaluate a question like this, you do need to have an understanding of integral and likely differential calculus as well. So at this point, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can work through this question on your own. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we can go through this together. Now, assuming that you have at least attempted the problem, let's start working through it. And if you do have suggestions for future questions of the day, feel free to leave those as comments. Now, when dealing with an integral, one way to interpret this is that we're looking for the function whose derivative is the tangent of x plus the secant squared of x. And in reality, we're looking for a class of functions because we will have some arbitrary constant added to it because when we differentiate, differentiate a constant, that's just equal to zero. But in other words, we're just looking for the function whose derivative is this expression here. And remember that when taking the integral of a sum, that we can take the integral of each piece individually. So for instance, if we have the integral of f of x plus g of x, and we need our dx, we can separate this into two integrals, the integral of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x dx. So let's start by rewriting this integral here as the integral of the tangent of x dx plus the integral of the secant squared of x dx. And let's start with the integral of the tangent. Now when dealing with trig functions, one thing you can do is rewrite them in terms of sine and cosine. And we just need to remember that the tangent function can be defined as the sine function divided by the cosine function. So let's rewrite this integral with that information. So we can rewrite this integral, the tangent of x dx as the integral of the sine of x divided by the cosine of x dx. And when rewriting it like this, it might be a little bit more clear, the path to take. And with integrals, we can always look for a substitution. And when taking a substitution, we will rewrite one of these functions with a different variable. And then we will need to rewrite dx in terms of that new variable. So we will need to take a derivative of that function and substitute it in. Now, if we do see a function and its derivative, that is a clue that we can use u substitution or substitution in general. But usually we will use the letter u and if we set u equal to the cosine of x and we take its derivative, we look at du in terms of dx, then the derivative of the cosine function, that's just the opposite of the sine function, and we will have dx there. Now, from here, we can substitute these values in and we can say that we have the integral of the sine of x dx but notice that the sine of x dx is equal to du. And actually we need to carry over this negative here. So if we put the negative on the other side of the equation, then we can directly substitute that sine of x dx is just minus du. And in the denominator here, we know that the cosine of x, we just set that equal to u. So from here, we have the opposite of the integral of du over u. And you might recognize that this integral evaluates to the natural log of the absolute value of this denominator, which is u. And we know what u is, we can just plug that back in. We have that this integral, the tangent of x dx is equal to minus the natural log of the absolute value of u, which is the cosine of x. And if we were just looking at this integral, we would also have to put plus some constant here, but we can add the constant when evaluating this sum of the two integrals. 
So now we just need to look at the integral for the secant squared of x. So let's make some room and we can go through that one. We have the integral of the secant squared of x dx and this one you might recognize. We could go through the same process, but it can be a little bit confusing. The most straightforward way to solve this integral is to recognize that when we take the derivative of the tangent function, this is equal to the secant squared of x. So the antiderivative of this function is simply the tangent of x, though we do have an indefinite integral, so we will need to add this constant of integration here. And just to prove that this is true, we can rewrite the tangent of x, again in terms of its constituents, the sine of x divided by the cosine of x. And we're taking the derivative of a quotient, so we can remember the quotient rule. We have two functions, f and g, and we take its, their derivative when we have a quotient of the two functions. We have the derivative of the numerator multiplied by the function in the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator multiplied by the function in the numerator. All this is then divided by the function in the denominator squared. So if we apply this, we take the derivative of the numerator, which is the cosine of x, multiplied by the function in the denominator. We subtract the derivative of the denominator, which would be minus the sine of x, so we get a plus sign here, and multiplied by the numerator function, which is the sine of x. All of this is then divided by that denominator function squared. And notice that in the numerator, we have the cosine squared of x plus the sine squared of x, which is one. So we get one over the cosine of x, and I'll write it like this where it's squared so that we can recognize that one over the cosine of x, that's just the secant function. And then we're squaring the secant function, which we usually write the two before the input of the function. So we could say this is the secant squared of x, though that is just a notational trick. So here we've proven that the function whose derivative is the secant squared of x, that function is the tangent function. So we've figured out both of these integrals individually, so we can now add them together. And we can rewrite this, that this integral is equal to minus the natural log of the absolute value of the cosine of x. And this comes from the integral of the tangent of x dx. And the integral of the secant squared of x, we know that's just the tangent function. And lastly, we do need to add some constant of integration. And remember, this constant is important when we are dealing with indefinite integrals where we don't have bounds on this integral. And that's just because when we check our work, when we take the derivative of this to double check that we did everything correctly, taking the derivative of a constant, that's just zero. So this part will go away. But like I mentioned, we can check our work here. We just need to take the derivative of the result we found. So we have minus the natural log of the cosine of x, the absolute value of the cosine of x, plus the tangent of x, plus c. And when we take its derivative, we take the derivative of each piece individually. And with the derivative of the natural log, we do one over the input here, and we do have that negative, so that would be the cosine of x, and we're using the chain rule, so we now need to multiply by the derivative of the cosine of x, which is the opposite of the sine of x. And when we simplify this, notice that the negatives will cancel, we get sine over cosine, which is the tangent function. And when we take the derivative of the tangent function, we know that's just the secant squared of x, we just went through that. And again, the derivative of that constant just goes away. Since that's equal to zero, the rate of change of a constant is zero. It does not change. So we get back our original expression when we take the derivative here. So this proves that this is in fact the correct answer.